welcome to the California University of Science and Medicine School of Medicine White Coat Ceremony, honoring the class of 2025. <laughs> yeah. And please be seated. We are extraordinarily excited to have each one of you here this afternoon braving the California heat in the month of February to help us uh, enjoy and share in what is an extraordinarily momentous event in the lives of these young people and in the history of our School of Medicine. It has literally been an event that is years in the making. And that's because the reason that these young people are here today is because they have spent years in preparation. And for that, for the long haul that they have had that has brought them to this place, they had to have had a lot of help along the way. And in recognition of that, if you helped one of these medical students here today achieve their dream to be in this medical school, whether you're a parent or a guardian or a significant other, would you please stand up and be recognized? Thank you so very much. We've had uh, always have a lot of help from uh, community members and uh, supporters along the way, and especially those in legislative positions who are in uh, authority and helpful to us to make uh, our voice known on both a state and national level. This morning we had uh, Assemblywoman Gomez Reyes with us, and she uh, provided us with a certificate of recognition. We also received a certificate of recognition from recognition from Congressman Pete Aguilar and Congressman Jay Obernoldi. So with that, we thank you for uh, their support. We also would like to, sit, uh, to thank the city of Colton and especially its mayor, Frank Navarro, for his uh, unwavering support throughout the years. Unfortunately, uh, he could not be with us today, but he did send his best regards to everyone. We'd also like to mention very special guests as well who are or may or may not be present this afternoon. But uh, we have Montclair Mayor Pro Tem and Prime Healthcare Foundation board member, William Bill Rue, ARMC Hospital Director and CUSM board member, William Gilbert, CUSM board member, Dr. Prasad Jaridi, and I believe Dr. Uh, is, is he here? I think he may have left. Okay, very much, very good. And from the uh, uh, Representative Pete Aguilar's office, uh, we have uh, Representative Prince Ogigabepi, and we have the, also the um, several members with us this afternoon from ARMC, our clinical affiliate right across the street, which provides our students with a stellar clinical uh, training with 456 beds of patients from which they can learn from on a daily basis. And uh, with that, we have uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Javad uh, Siddiqui here. Uh, Dr. Siddiqui, right here. Right here, <laughs> sir. And Dr. Siddiqui, yes. <laughs> is the, Dr. Siddiqui is a uh, world-renowned neurosurgeon and chairs up the, uh, uh, is chair of neurosurgery at ARMC. And we also have Dr. Carol Lee, who's Emergency Medicine Residency Program Director at ARMC. Yeah. See, they like you already. <laughs> and she also serves as the chair of CUSM's Medical Schools Admissions Committee. We have Dr. Andrew Lowe, ARMC Chief of Surgery, of, uh, Chief of Pharmacy. And we have uh, another special guest who I think has a student in our class this afternoon, and that's Dr. Ha Lee, who is chair of radiology at ARMC. Dr. Lee, thank you. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you somebody who really needs no introduction, and that's Dr. Paul Lyons. Uh, Dr. Lyons has lived and worked in the Inland Empire for well over 10 years a graduate of the, the Ohio State University. Dr. Lyons first came to California as the second person hired to start the University of California Riverside School of Medicine, where he served as the Senior Associate Dean for Education and Chair of the Department of Family Medicine. In addition, Dr. Lyons was responsible for the expansion of UCR's Family Medicine Clinic and the creation of the Riverside Community Free Clinic 
where he continues to volunteer to this day. Dr. Lyons has received numerous awards for teaching and clinical excellence. He is an avid reader, writer, and noted leader in medical education. It is my esteemed pleasure to introduce to you the president of CUSM and the dean of, school, of the School of Medicine, Dr. Paul E. Lyons. Good afternoon. I'd like to add on behalf of CUSM my welcome to Pete's. On behalf of the board, the administration, the students, the faculty, the staff of CUSM, it is a thrill to see you all here today for this white coat ceremony. Um, there are many ways that you can recognize a physician in your midst. One might be the honorific of doctor, which all of these bright shiny faces in the first five and a half rows will have in just a few years. Another might be a stethoscope slung around their neck or jammed in their pocket as they wander around in varying degrees of disorientation. <laughs> but probably the most obvious, most visible, and most distinct signifier of a physician is the white coat. And so it seems appropriate that we would gather today to celebrate this milestone of the class of 2025 receiving their first white coat. It may come as a surprise to some of you in the audience that although the white coat signifies the practice of medicine, the actual recognition of receiving your white coat is a relatively recent development. I'm actually changing the story from this morning because I've learned additional details. <laughs> it turns out that the first white coat ceremony was not in 1993, which I will tell you about in a moment, but in 1989. And for all of you parents in the audience, you will appreciate that the motivation behind the first ever white coat in a US medical school was because of kids these days <laughs> and complaints from the faculty that medical students were showing up in baseball caps and shorts. And so the dean did the only obvious thing there was to do he gave them all white coats and told them to show up looking a little more clean tomorrow. <laughs> if that resonates with parents in the audience, as a parent, it resonates with me as well. I can say from personal experience that the medical students of that era were in fact an unruly and unpromising lot of whom not very much was expected and with good reason. <laughs> medical students since then have become a much more promising group of young men and women. The first formal white coat ceremony to combine receiving the white coat with the recitation of the Hippocratic Oath and entry into the profession was at the other CUSM, the lesser known Columbia University, <laughs> in 1993. Since that time, it has spread to all schools across the United States and many schools worldwide as well, and with good reason. So it is my pleasure to welcome all of you today to the CUSM White Coat Ceremony for the class of 2025. We appreciate your joining us for this ceremony and look forward to sharing this moment with all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Lyons. One thing I uh, failed to mention early on is uh, something that uh, I think bears to being mentioned at this point, and that is, is that each one of these individuals in front of me, I don't have to tell you this, but you know already how extraordinary they are. But what you may not know is that they were picked from a pool of over 6,500 applicants who wanted to be seated where they are today. And so they are deserving of these seats. They are deserving of the honor to be entering the medical profession, and they have the full confidence of our board of trustees, our administration, and the esteemed faculty behind me. 
to know that they will graduate and represent this school well. So thank you. <clears throat> if you're lucky, somewhere in your life you'll have the opportunity to recognize that you've had the privilege to be in the presence of someone with true greatness. A statistical outlier, someone who rose to great heights in spite of overwhelming circumstances. Seated on this platform with me is Dr. Prem Reddy, whose name adores this building. And what you should know is, is that we would not be here were it not for Dr. Reddy. An idea in his mind several years ago to help to give back to this community that had been ex so extraordinarily good to him. And it coupled with his passion for wanting to provide education to folks who would eventually become physicians and practice in this area. Blossomed from that very, very small seed to what you see today. And thankfully for his and his family's transformational gift of $60 million to make that seed grow, blossom, and become the California University of Science and Medicine. You talk about a legacy. By the year 2035, and we will have graduated over 1,500 plus physicians who will be out practicing. What became as a vision years ago in this gentleman's mind will now be affecting over 11,500,000 patient encounters each day or each year by graduates of this institution. That's amazing. And I am honored that uh, I am able to introduce this extraordinary gentleman to you this afternoon. We are forever in debt for his extraordinary gift. He is a physician, an entrepreneur, and a philanthropist. It is my sincere honor and pleasure to recognize and thank Dr. Reddy and his family for making everything we have here today possible. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a true CUSM welcome to our founder and chairman of the board, Dr. Prem Reddy. Good afternoon, or shall I say, good hot afternoon. <laughs> uh, before I start my speech, um, surprisingly, right now, in this moment, my family, rest of the family, walked in. And I just want to take this uh, moment to recognize them. Um, uh, <clears throat> my daughter, my first daughter is Kavita Brady, which you will be hearing from. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I said Kavita Reddy Bhatia. I forgot to add Bhatia there. <laughs> and uh, it's a Freudian mistake, you know. Uh, Sunita Reddy is my second daughter. Uh, she's into, uh, could you stand up? She's into <laughs> hospital management, uh, a, a graduate of master's from uh, Columbia and Harvard. Uh, <laughs> And uh, next to Sunita, could you stand up? Who is Leila? Leah, okay. This is uh, uh, Leah Bhatia. Actually, Leah Reddy Bhatia. <laughs> uh, if one member in the family is going to be coming here one day, sitting in these seats, it will be her. Uh, because she's dedicated to medical profession and caring for the people and that is not afraid of injections or blood. <laughs> uh, on the contrary, who is that next? Okay, this is a little one, uh, Leila Bhatia, and uh, uh, she, she is uh, super intelligent, and I'm not sure what she will become, okay? Could be a doctor, or could be a poet, or could be uh, anything she wants. And uh, next to her is uh, my son-in-law, husband of uh, Kavita Reddy Bhatia, uh, Sunny Bhatia. <laughs> Sunny Bhatia is a cardiologist and also a chief executive officer and chief medical officer of Prime Healthcare of uh, 
region one, that means California and Nevada put together. Great, the next one, my first grandson, uh, <coughs> uh, um, <coughs> Shayan Bhatia, we call him Shay Bhatia, uh, and he's a super, super brilliant guy, uh, and I don't know what he will be, because he probably would belong in Stanford and something like in the Silicon Valley. And we'll wait and see, okay? And thank you for uh, letting me introduce my family. And I thought it would be some inspiration for them to see not only their grandfather and mother. Okay, with that, uh, let's come to today. Okay. I am very honored and actually happy to be with all of you as you begin your uh, journey into medicine today. Personally for me, this is a culmination of a long dream and hard work over many, many years. Many of you may not know that I was born in a small rural village in southern India where I didn't have the luxury of electricity or portable water till I was 18 years old when I went to college. Uh, I was uh, uh, the first uh, in the generations of my family uh, to go to any school, let alone medical school. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this has to be one of the best stories of the American dream come true. I credit this entirely to this mightiest nation on earth, nation of immigrants, and boundless opportunities and extreme tolerance. I am grateful that education has provided me the opportunity to accomplish and give back more than I ever thought uh, of that was possible. This brings us today, as you each are given a unique opportunity to dedicate your lives to medicine. As Hippocrates once said, wherever the art of medicine is loud, there is also a love for humanity. <clears throat> medicine gives you unique and sacred opportunity to be a part of another's life, often in their times of greatest need. It is an intimate and profound relationship, and no matter how much healthcare and the world changes, you will always have a chance to make a difference in the lives of others. Medicine also gives you opportunity to contribute to advancing the science of medicine in time where technology is shaping the future of medicine. Lastly, uh, it gives you a chance to affect healthcare in general and impact people in any community across the world. The world will always need compassion, hope, humanity, and goodness. We believe that medicine has the ability to change lives and therefore change the world. We are honored to support your dreams, your future in medicine, and most importantly, your commitment to giving. We wish you the best of luck. May God bless you and give you the chance to bless others through your work. God bless you all. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Reddy, for that very inspirational message. I think you will be blessed again here with our next uh, speaker. We're extraordinarily uh, excited and, and blessed to have uh, great leadership in our Board of Trustees. And the next person I'd like to introduce is uh, and recognize today is Dr. Kavitha Reddy Bhatia, founding vice chair of the California University of Science and Medicine Dr. Bhatia 
who has been locally and nationally recognized as a physician leader. Also serves as the chair of the Prime Healthcare Foundation and Prime Healthcare's chief medical officer for strategy, leading strategic innovation at the 45 hospital health system across the United States. Dr. Bathia received her MD degree from the UCLA School of Medicine, graduating with honors and letters of distinction in doctoring. Dr. Bathia, a pediatrician, also earned a Master of Medical Management from USC and is a fellow of the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American College of Healthcare Executives. Dr. Bathia is a devoted philanthropist. She was awarded a miraculous medallion from Mother Teresa for her work with the missionaries of charity, caring for the sick and dying on the streets of Calcutta. Dr. Bathia also serves as executive director of the Dr. Prem Reddy Foundation, dedicated to improving healthcare and providing scholarships and educational opportunities for underserved students. Please welcome the Vice Chair of our Board of Trustees, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kavitha Reddy Bathia. Thank you, Pete. Um, I am honored to be with you all today, and I feel like we've all become family um, because you've now met all of my family. And so it's a, um, it's a, it's a particular pleasure to, to look out at this audience and see the students and their families and all of us coming together in celebration of this very special moment. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, we'd like to thank all of those that have made the dream of CUSM possible the partnership with Arrowhead Regional Medical Center, the County of San Bernardino, the Prime Healthcare Foundation, Dr. Reddy, and the support of countless others. We'd also like to thank Dr. Lyons for his leadership and the dedicated faculty of both ARMC and CUSM for their belief in the mission of CUSM. We congratulate the families who've joined us, and most importantly, the students who are an inspiration to us all. I'd like to ask each of us to take a moment, a moment to reflect on the dreams that have led you here, the challenges you have overcome, the hopes you carry with you, and the people who have loved and supported you, those with us today, and those who we have lost, but undoubtedly would be filled with pride and joy. Today is a dream come true for all of us. For the class of 2025, this event symbolizes your entry into medicine and the great privilege you will forever have to improve the lives of others in the most profound ways. Medicine is an honor and a gift. As Sir William Osler first shared, let me congratulate you on a calling with intellectual and moral interests found in no other profession. And what an extraordinary time it is to enter medicine. As a global pandemic has impacted every nation, every community, and the life of every human being. We've all witnessed the power of medicine to save lives and change history. We're reminded of the need for compassion, dignity, and equity in healthcare, and that medicine is about making a difference in the times of greatest need, selflessly and tirelessly. You each have a unique opportunity to shape the future of medicine. We're grateful to honor and celebrate your commitment to medicine and the remarkable impact you will make. Throughout your careers, May you always remember the dreams that have led you here. And we hope you never stop dreaming, giving, and changing the world. Thank you. I grumbled a little bit about having to do this ceremony in the heat 
and they promised that I could have one minute for each degree Fahrenheit. I believe that gives me 84 minutes. I will try to confine my, my remarks to less than that. It's my tr great pleasure to welcome all of you this afternoon to this ceremony in recognition of the students who are occupying the front of this space. Welcome to the staff, the faculty, our distinguished guests, friends and family of the class of 2025 to the white coat ceremony for that class. In particular, of course, I'd like to welcome the class of 2025, without whom, of course, we could not have had this ceremony. The class of 2025, who will be known from this point forward as the class that should have known better. <laughs> Unlike the class of 2024, who didn't see this coming, you knew what you signed up for. We interviewed you and admitted you without ever having met you in person. What a big day for CUSM. What a big day and how lovely it is to see so many faces gathered for such a momentous occasion. Masks and all. For the first time in almost two years, we gather in public, in person, for an event to recognize an important shared milestone. The pandemic has created many holes in the social fabric of our communities, but none of those holes have been quite as big or as sustained as the hole it created in our shared public moments. There are many reasons why we needed to allow for that hole. Health and safety needed to be prioritized. Gatherings like this are symbolically important, but they are also not without risk. And when safer alternatives existed, we wisely opted for those safer alternatives. There were also other activities for which virtual alternatives were not available, and we needed to prioritize our time and energy for those. Work and school, things that cannot be done as well in the virtual space. So this is not an indictment of the fact that we have not been together, simply a reflection on the very real costs of the pandemic. We have not gathered in celebration in more than two years. Today we do so, and that's a milestone in its own right. Two years of diligent safety practices, two years of hard, scientific work resulting in advances like the almost miraculous delivery of vaccinations in a time frame no one would have thought possible. Two years of creative adaptation and flexibility and forbearance and patience. Two years of frontline struggle two years of building and sustaining communities in ways that were new and unusual. Two long years. But those two years have now made it possible for us to gather again, and as noted, that is a remarkable milestone, masks and all. Masks, a sign of all that we've collectively been through, to arrive at this day. Signs is an interesting word in medicine. Signs are what a physician looks for to help them make sense of the symptoms their patients are experiencing. Signs begin the dialogue that becomes the shared understanding, the substance of the physician-patient relationship. And so it seems appropriate that the first public gathering we will have 
is in recognition of one of the key milestones in the professional lives of future physicians, receiving a white coat, the white coat, by which I mean the white coat that is both a symbol and the substance of what it means to be a physician. The white coat that represents me membership in and acceptance of the responsibilities that entrance entails in the profession of medicine. The physical representation of a million acts and actions that define the profession of medicine. Of course, this is not the only white coat that these students will ever own. It may not even be the first white coat they've ever owned. They may very well have lost that one already. The white coat will be less white with every passing day. It will be less clean, less pristine, less pressed, less empty, more jammed with every passing day. It will be slept on and slept in. It will be soiled. It will be forgotten, lost, recovered, and lost again. Stains will appear, pockets will fray, badges will fall off and be stuck on, pockets will tear, it will in time be replaced. <laughs> this white coat is temporary, the white coat is not. Because that white coat is the symbolic representation of medicine at its very best. It's symbolic of the distance traveled to put it on. It is symbolic of the many miles to be traveled with it draped across your shoulders. Every late night and every early morning every patient whose hand is held, every technical skill that is practiced, practiced, and then practiced again, because mastery is the only acceptable level of performance. Every diagnosis given, every question answered, and every question for which no answer can be given. Every face, every voice, every hand, every family member seen and touched and heard, every life helped into this world and every life helped to exit with dignity and in comfort. Every decision made with clarity and conviction, and a million made with uncertainty and trepidation. Every step taken along this chosen path, and every step not taken along a thousand other paths you might otherwise have chosen. Every colleague, friend, peer, family member, spouse, and child, and a thousand nameless, faceless strangers whose actions helped me and you, all of us, along the way. They are all there in the pockets and stains, the wrinkles and the tears, the scuffs and the marks of the white coat. That is the substance that gives shape to the symbol that we recognize today. The last two years have made it abundantly clear 
that a life in service to the health professions is much more than a job. It is a calling. The exemplary performance of frontline care providers of all disciplines has been an inspiration in times that desperately needed inspiration. A substantial demonstration of all that is best about humans in times of extreme challenge. And so we gather, masks and all, a sign of all that we have done together to arrive at this moment, a tangible symbol that in challenging times, we can rise together to meet those challenges. Medicine has always required much of those who choose to follow this path. The past two years have starkly demonstrated exactly how much. Today we welcome the class of 2025 to that calling, symbolically and substantively, as we celebrate our white coat ceremony and we gather together to do so. A sign of hope in challenging times. A symbol of all that is best in the human spirit. The substance of what it means to be a physician. Once again, welcome and thank you for joining us and as I have said to these students, seven days a week from the moment they arrived, stay safe and stay connected. Thank you, Dr. Lyons, for an extraordinarily inspirational message. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite Dr. Lyons back to the stage along with Dr. Reddy and Dr. Kavitha Bhatia to begin the cloaking ceremony. Vahe Agajanyan. Angela Aguirre. Saba Ahmed. Akagi Excuse me Simon Alarcon Caroline Albright. Murad Aldomi. Tony Aloyan.
John Alvarez. Love Amin. Matthew Aquino. Camila Araujo. Melanie Owl. Wen Ong. Nedjla Bernici Chile. Kimia Boldaji. Kareem Burenin. Tyler Canato. Cheyenne Janae Canizares. Sebastian Cano Beske. Cole Carlson. Patrick Carroll. Kelly Chang. Kyle Chang. Andriana Chin. Sewan Sarah Chun. Brian Clements. <laughs> Julia Cochran.
Ashley Curtis. Katayun Davari. Kimberly Rose de Guzman. Raymond Deep. Elena Din. Alexa Fabrizio. Stuart Farrell Jr. Juliet Foreman. Krista Frakes. Mohammed Gari. Amy Garrett. Tatiana Gonzalez. Abigail Marie Reyes Gopez. Brian Hayden. Brian Hayden. Millen Hirpera. Victoria Holm. Jody Orwitz. Jennifer Huang. Grace Wen. Wen. 
Nia Wynn. Leo Isogolion. Ethan Izu. Nicole Jacobs. Adele Kanan. Grace Jiwon Kim. Allison Kimbell. Courtney Koenig. <laughs> Catherine Lai. Sky Lander. Lynn Lee. Oh, that's your dad. <laughs> Tiffany Bijou Lay. Jace Lenhoff. Zachary Lasek. Jennifer Lewis. Andrew Liao. William Liao. Roman Uchini. Andrew Lukashevitz. Brianna Ma. Sam McDowell. Dean Madori.
Joshua Mahatka. Lana Mamoon. Patrick Mariani. Shyan Masumi. Jake Madelon. James McDermott. Min Jung Jane Moon. Adam Musa. Navid Mostagni. Juan Muniz. Fabian Najah. Suhas Naredi. Julie Wen. Sabrina Wen. Yasmin Nizam. Jordan Pace. Pot Panchal. Jay Patel. Morgan Peterson. Michael Filippi. Michael Pierce.
Alexander Chin. Ibrahim Quadri. Vethika Reddy. Kyle Rye. Jared Reynolds. Drew Richard. Benjamin Riegsecker. Zara Rizvi. Denzil Robinson. Ivan Rublay. Jed Santa Maria. Schwartz. Ahmad Sabai. Arjun Shama. Linda Shin. Lizette Silva. Megan Smith. Caleb Solivio. Amir Texeria. Jack Thomas. Kyle Thomas. Sedra TB.
Vivian Tu. Sydney Townsend. <laughs> Stefan Tran. <laughs> Christina Trin. Rena Tuli Arisa Huheno Austin Vo Devin Lovell Wajal. Santana Yosafi. Garbel Zinavand. Chi Zhang. Let's hear it for the class of 2025. This is a day of first in many ways. This is the first time we've had an event like this on our campus. It's the first time that we've had two events like this on our campus. And it's also the first time that we've ever had the father of a student actually put the white coat on uh, the student. So thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> And now we come to that part of the ceremony where the students will be asked to take in the, uh, what has become known internationally as the Hippocratic Oath. And for that, we'd like to ask the students to, uh, to stand. And Dr. Lyons, would you please come and lead the oath? Congratulations again to the class of 2025. Welcome to the family. At this time, I'd like to have the class of 2025 join me in the recitation of the Hippocratic Oath. I would also, at this time, like to invite any physicians in the audience who feel inclined to join us in renewing your vow to the Hippocratic Oath to join us. You will find the oath printed on page five of the program. At the time of being admitted as a member of the medical profession. At this point, you now repeat with me. I solemnly pledge to consecrate my life to the service of humanity. I will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity. The health of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the secrets that are confided in me even after the patient has died. I will maintain by all the means in my power the honor and the noble traditions of the medical profession. My colleagues will be my sisters and brothers. I will not permit considerations of age, disease or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, 
or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Once again, class of 2025, congratulations and welcome. We'd like to thank everyone for coming here this afternoon and joining in this extraordinarily meaningful uh, ceremony with us. I'd like to especially thank our esteemed faculty behind me uh, for uh, sharing with us their Saturday and of course the uh, volunteer staff who are here today which number well over two dozen I believe to help make sure that this event uh, rolled smoothly. So thank you everyone and if you would uh, kindly remain where you are until after the recessional. We'd appreciate it. Have a great day.